Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for those songs that many listeners think mean one thing, but in actuality mean something quite different. For what it's worth, it was worth all the while. Number 30. Drops of Jupiter, Train. The lyrics throughout Drops of Jupiter talk about two people being separated from each other, with the lead singer Pat Monahan asking about how the other person's time has been since they left. Now that she's back in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in her head. With that being said, it isn't a big surprise that many people interpret the song to be about the breakup of a romantic relationship. However, rather than a romantic partner, Monahan wrote this song about an even more powerful loss in his life, the loss of his mother who had succumbed to cancer. But tell me, did the wind sweep you off your feet? Once you know that, it seems obvious given the lyrics about heaven, the universe, and the beautiful opening line, now that she's back in the atmosphere. And now you know Number 29, Slide, Goo Goo Dolls. The common interpretation of Slide by the Goo Goo Dolls is that the track is a love song. Could you whisper in my ear the things you want to feel? And in a way it is, but not in the way most of us assume. With lines like, I want to wake up where you are and what you are is beautiful, the couple in the song is definitely in love. However, the crux of the song, the big plot line that gets overlooked by most of us, is the fact that the girl in the song comes from a very strict religious family, and she's pregnant. Don't you love the life you kill? The priest is on the phone. Your father hit the wall. When Johnny Resnick sings, Do You Want to Get Married or Run Away?, he's referring to the limited options they think they have. Number 28, The One I Love, R.E.M. The song is called The One I Love. How can this one not be a love song, right? This one goes out to the one I love. And in 1987, Michael Stipe told Rolling Stone that, quote, it's probably better that they just think it's a love song at this point. However, while the song is relatively light on lyrics, most of them are anything but loving. This one goes out to the one I've left behind. In reference to the titular One I Love, Stipe refers to, quote, a simple prop to occupy my time. As he said in a different interview at the time, quote, it's very clear that it's about using people over and over again. So basically, you might want to think twice before you add this to your Spotify romantic playlist. Number 27, Puff the Magic Dragon, Peter, Paul, and Mary. We know what you're thinking. Come on, Watch Mojo. We all know this song isn't about a dragon, but is actually about herbal enjoyment. Puff the Magic Dragon lived by the sea. Well, allow us to take this moment to blow your minds because Puff the Magic Dragon is actually about a dragon. In 1959, Leonard Lipton wrote a poem about a dragon. A couple of years later, Peter Yarrow, the Peter in Peter, Paul, and Mary, found the poem and wrote his song based on said poem. Both Lipton and Yarrow have repeatedly said that Puff the Magic Dragon is not about anything more than that. Number 26, A Horse With No Name, America. The misinterpretation of A Horse With No Name being about illicit substances started pretty immediately after the song's release back in the early 70s. On the first part of the journey, I was looking at all the life. And it would seem that it comes primarily from the fact that horse is a common slang term. If the band had anticipated that would happen, maybe they would have stuck with the song's original title, Desert Song. And why was that the original title? Because the song is indeed about the desert. See, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. It felt good to be out of the rain. With a Salvador Dali desert painting and an M.C. Escher horse as inspiration, if the song is a metaphor for anything, it's, as songwriter Dewey Bunnell put it, quote, a vehicle to get away from life's confusion into a quiet, peaceful place, but not with substances. <laughs> Number 25, There She Goes, The Laws. 
With lyrics referencing the she in the song's title as racing through my brain, pulsing through my vein, and no one else could heal my pain, it's no surprise that many have interpreted the song to be about struggles with substance use. And given the reputation of the prime mover of the laws, Lee Mavers, all the pieces seem to fit together perfectly. And that assumption was incredibly widespread when the song became a hit. There she goes again. But here's the thing. Mavers and other members of the band have consistently denied that the song has anything to do with that, nor does Mavers' personal history at the time of its recording. So we'll take him at his word. Number 24. Mr. Tambourine Man, Bob Dylan Do we sense a theme? There's an assumption by many that most every song released in the 1960s was about illicit substances. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. And sure, many are. And yes, Mr. Tambourine Man does have lyrics like, Take me on a trip upon your magic swirling ship. But no, contrary to popular opinion, this Bob Dylan song isn't. In fact, the song's inspiration literally came from a man playing a tambourine. The man in question is folk musician Bruce Langhorn, who played on a number of Dylan tracks. I'm not sleepy, and there is no place I'm going to. Well, one day Langhorn came in with a tambourine that Dylan described as, quote, this gigantic tambourine, big as a wagon wheel. This was the seed that eventually grew into Mr. Tambourine Man. In the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. Number 23, Semi Charmed Life, Third Eye Blind. This one goes the other way, with its actual meaning much darker than what is commonly assumed. Given the song's upbeat vibe and status as, as Rolling Stone called it, quote, one of the most relentlessly sunshiny songs of the 90s, you'd be forgiven for not realizing Semi Charmed Life is about struggles with substance use. You'd also be forgiven for missing the not-so-hidden meaning had you only heard the edited version that most radio stations pounded into our eardrums back in 1997, since a line that was very specific in its detail was cut for airplay. Number 22, Alive, Pearl Jam. While it would make sense for a song called Alive to be a celebration of life, that isn't what Eddie Vedder had in mind when he wrote the lyrics. Rather than a celebration, Alive is a tale about a boy who finds out his dad isn't his biological father. And then it gets much, much darker from there. Vedder there used to think the misperception of the song's meaning and the refrain, I'm still alive, was, in his own words, quote, a curse. But he has since talked about how the audience's reaction to the song over the years, quote, lifted the curse. The audience changed the meaning for me. Yeah. Number 21, Hotel California, Eagles. Don't feel too bad if you don't fully understand the true meaning of the Eagles' Hotel California because, well, we're not sure the Eagles know it either. On the dark desert highway, cool wind in my head. Lead singer Don Henley has even been quoted as saying the song, quote, can have a million interpretations. What we do know is that it isn't really about a hotel. Duh. Instead, the hotel in question and the experiences therein are metaphors. Welcome to the Hotel California. But metaphors for what exactly range from, to quote Henley, quote, high life in Los Angeles to, quote, the music business to, quote, the dark underbelly of the American dream. Yeah, that's a lot of ground. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Number 20, Poker Face, Lady Gaga. With lyrics like bluffin' with my muffin, Poker Face is obviously an X-rated track, right? Tell you that I love you, kiss or hug you, cause I'm bluffin' with my muffin. That's also pretty much how Lady Gaga described it to Rolling Stone in 2009, but maybe she wanted to keep the personal backstory to the song a secret for a little while. On the surface, it's also clear that Can't Read My Poker Face could refer to the early moments of any romantic encounter, when you're trying to suss out what your potential suitor is thinking. Can't read my, can't read my, no, 
But aside from that, it's actually a song that deals with Lady Gaga's personal experiences with bisexuality. She found herself fantasizing about a woman while getting intimate with a man, requiring her to mask her true feelings, or wear a poker face, as it were. Number 19. Possession, Sarah McLachlan. Listen as the wind blows from across the great divide. If you're under the impression that Possession is a love song, we're sorry in advance. Lines like, I'll take your breath away, make it easy to see why people might take it that way. But look closer, and you'll notice some pretty creepy sentiments. And I Lachlan was inspired to make this song by two fans that created a fantasy relationship with her, sending love letters on a regular basis. One even went on to sue McLaughlin for songwriting credit, but took their own life before the case went to trial. Possession is still one of Sarah's finest songs, but you may want to think twice before playing it on a first date. Number 18. Hey man, nice shot. Filter. Wish I met you. Moving on to an even darker topic. Hey man, nice shot debuted just one year after the world was shocked by the sudden death of Kurt Cobain. Hey man, nice shot. Shot, man. Given its timing, many assumed Hey Man, Nice Shot was about this event. In reality, it was inspired by R. Bud Dwyer a former Pennsylvania state treasurer who took his own life on the air in 1987. This was in response to an indictment on Dwyer for bribery despite his claims of being framed. Lines referencing those who were right there after the smoke has gone highlights the public nature of Dwyer's death, which differs from Cobain who died all alone. This misinterpretation is due largely to poor timing and misdirected controversy upon its release. Number 17, Closing Time, Semisonic. Closing time, one last call for alcohol, so finish your whiskey or beer. This one seems pretty straightforward. Finish your whiskey or beer. Clearly, Semisonic is relaying the sense of loneliness experienced when the warmth of booze and friends fades away at the end of a night out. However, lead singer Dan Wilson explained that the song is actually a metaphor for childbirth. So gather up your jackets, move it to the exits. I hope you have found with his first child on the way. Wilson used the song as a way to express his emotions during a transformative time in his life. Upon learning this, the song's sad existential message transforms into one of hope for new beginnings in a person's life after experiencing the joys and challenges of parenthood. Number 16, Imagine, John Lennon. Imagine there's no heaven. Rolling Stone hailed this song as, quote, faith in the power of a world united in purpose to repair and change itself. These sentiments, along with its hopeful sound complete with chirping birds, have made this song a wholesome classic. Imagine all the people living for today. Except for the fact that even John Lennon admitted it's virtually the Communist Manifesto. Upon closer analysis, you'll find remarks about a world with no possessions, no countries, and no religion. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Preaching anti-capitalism and anti-religion doesn't get much sneakier than this, especially considering the fact that it was released in the early 70s during the peak of the Vietnam War. Number 15, Fire and Rain, James Taylor. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Taylor's career-defining masterpiece hits all the right notes needed to reach the upper echelons of folk rock success. It may come as a surprise, however, that it's not actually about his girlfriend dying in a plane crash. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. 
I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. Each verse tells the story of a low point in Taylor's life, spanning from the death of a friend to substance use disorder and finally the failing of his much loved band, Flying Machines. Sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Unlike some on our list, this revelation doesn't change the essence of the song, and it's still the perfect track to put on next time you're feeling down and out. I thought I'd see you fire me. La, 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 la. Number 14, Ironic, Alanis Morissette. It's a black fly in your Chardonnay. Events and statements that are deliberately opposite of what one may expect are considered ironic. What takes place in Alanis Morissette's song can be more appropriately categorized as tragic. It's like rain. Winning the lottery and dying the next day, being pardoned from death row two minutes too late, and discovering your dream man is already married are all tragic events, leaving listeners confused as to why a song named Ironic contains no real irony. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? A little too. Stay with us here, but the lack of irony in a song named for irony is, in fact, ironic. Confused? Think it over a bit. It's actually quite clever. Number 13, Blackbird, The Beatles. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Written by Paul McCartney and featuring background vocals from an actual Blackbird, it's easy to think this song is just about Blackbirds. All your life. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Paul has since made it clear that Blackbird is actually a metaphor written in response to high racial tensions during the 1960s civil rights movement. The Blackbird's attempt to take his broken wings and learn to fly is meant to symbolize the struggle of African Americans to come together and heal amid severe racial discrimination. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. This isn't the first time that the Beatles have laced their songs with multiple meanings, nor the first time they've touched heavily on social issues. You are only waiting for this moment to arrive. Number 12, Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen. He's alone, but you don't really care for music, do you? Hallelujah is overflowing with religious reference from King David to Samson. Despite the divine nature of the song, the oft-repeated hallelujah is not intended to express worship, but rather deep pain from a man who has experienced love turned sour. Every single breath that we drew was hallelujah. Each hallelujah is spoken a little more tongue-in-cheek, with tragic love stories such as David's romantic encounter with Bathsheba interwoven throughout. There's a reason this song remains so relevant today, as it embodies the sensation of great sorrow so profoundly, despite lyrics suggesting adoration and exaltation upon first impression. Number 11, Wake Me Up When September Ends, Green Day. Summer has come and passed, the innocent can never last. One of Green Day's most vulnerable pieces of work, there's no question that this hit rocked its listeners to the core upon release. Ring out the bells again, like we did when spring began. The music video's depiction of war, along with American Idiot's central theme of George W. Bush era American life, may lead listeners to believe that this song references the 9 11 terror attacks in New York. Wake me up when However, singer Billy Joe Armstrong has gone on to state that the song's intent was actually to express a much more personal loss that of his father, who died when Billy was only 10 years old. Like my father's come to pass, 20 years has gone so fast. Number 10, American Girl, Tom Petty. Proximity to tragedy has a strange way of skewing a song's meaning, as exemplified once again in Tom Petty's American Girl. She was an American girl. A young woman from the University of Florida took her own life shortly before the song's release, which incidentally took place close to Gainesville, where Tom Petty was born. She stood alone. 
The line about a girl standing alone on her balcony is merely a coincidence, with Petty's inspiration coming from the sounds of the freeway near his apartment. Unfortunately for urban legend devotees, Tom made it clear that American Girl is a love song with no intentional references to the tragic event. Number 9. More Than Words – Extreme Saying I love you is not the words I want to hear from you. Ever say something with good intentions that gets taken completely out of context? Well, you have plenty in common with this band, then. More than words is all you have to do. This 1991 hit is widely interpreted as a beckoning for sex because saying I love you to your significant other just isn't enough. That's your love for me is real. Extreme's guitarist Nuno Betancourt has gone on record saying that the song was intended to explore how the phrase I love you was becoming meaningless in relationships and perhaps it would be more evocative to express love in more creative ways. Hold me close, don't Our minds were in the gutter on this one. Just by saying I love you. Number eight, Ticket to Ride, The Beatles. I think I'm gonna be sad. I think it's today. The Beatles are a British treasure from a simpler time. Back then, songs didn't need to be laced with dirty messages to grab the public's attention. With the exception of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which is incorrectly believed to describe a psychedelic experience, their songs appear squeaky clean most of the time. She's got a ticket to ride, but she don't care. Ticket to Ride, though, which tells the story of a girl who has decided to leave her lover, actually has a surprisingly dirty meaning, according to John Lennon. He originally coined the phrase in reference to sex workers that authorities have noted are clean. Don't know why she's riding so high. Old John Lennon sure knows how to cover up a message the public's not ready for. But she don't care. Number 7. Harder to Breathe, Maroon 5. I dare you say that my behavior is unacceptable, so condescending, unnecessary, critical. Maroon 5's debut album, Songs About Jane, focused much of its efforts on expressing the inner turmoil of Adam Levine after a tough breakup with, well, Jane. The panic is cold. It stands to reason that the album's first track would make this message crystal clear. At first glance, the lyrics appear to describe the feelings of loneliness and suffocation of a breakup. But Adam has since declared that Harder to Breathe is actually about the band's label demanding more music late into production. It may have been intended initially as a screw you to the band's label. Is there anyone out there? Cause it's getting harder and harder to breathe. But we can guess that the animosity faded when the royalties started to come in. Number 6. Summer of 69, Brian Adams. We all know that guy in high school who couldn't go without making a low hanging sexual joke anytime someone mentioned the number 69. It turns out that Brian Adams' nostalgic rock classic was never reminiscent of that final summer of the 60s, as Adams would have only been 10 at the time. Brian has gone on to admit that the musical experiences are merely filler and that the intended meaning is to detail a summer full of lots and lots of sex. A lot of people think it's about the year, but actually it's more about a it's more about making love in the summertime. It turns out this time around, immature high school guy was right, and the most obvious of innuendos slipped right under our noses. Number 5. In the Air Tonight. Phil Collins. Allegedly, Phil Collins wrote this song after witnessing someone drown while another man refused to help. While this would certainly add layers to Collins' character, it begs several questions. Namely, if Collins saw this all happen, why couldn't he just jump in and save his friend? It turns out he was actually expressing his emotions during a devastating divorce. How could I the first time? The last time we ever met. He 
intended to vent his sporadic anger towards the situation without really giving the song an exact direction. It's now considered one of the greatest songs of all time, and likely one of the few examples of divorce leading to a financial gain. Number 4. Like a Virgin, Madonna If the guys in Reservoir Dogs are any indication as to public perception of this song, it's safe to say most people think it's about, well, sex. Yeah, she's feeling so she ain't feeling so fast. But Madonna cleared this up in the most remarkable fashion, sending director Quentin Tarantino an autograph exclaiming that the song is, quote, about love. Like a Written by songwriter Billy Steinberg, it compares the feeling of emotional destruction after a relationship with the shiny new feeling of falling in love again. At this point, we're at a loss whether our minds are in the gutter or we're painfully naive. Either way, the double meaning of this song has surely helped it become one of her biggest hits ever. Number 3. Every Breath You Take – The Police seemingly loving lyrics and a catchy guitar hook, this song sounds like it belongs at a wedding reception or a school dance. Can't you see you belong to me? However, the song is actually about a stalker, and the lyrics make no mistakes about this. Every move you make. They actually say the words, every bone you break, I'll be watching you. And that's not even the creepy bit. It's best not to analyze this one too much. The focal image of the music video is a window washer, while the girl in question never once even makes an appearance. What may have started as a pleasant toe-tapper kind of makes you want to take a shower when you realize what it's all about. Around, Number 2. Good Riddance, Time of Your Life, Green Day Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road this song has a message that is mind-bogglingly obvious, but largely ignored nonetheless. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. The expression good riddance suggests relief at being liberated from a troublesome person or event, yet the song is heavily associated with nostalgia and high regards for time past. This is perhaps due to the rich, beautiful melody which masks Billy Joe Armstrong's intended message of screw you to his then-girlfriend who left him to travel to Ecuador. With this in mind, its continual placement in graduation slideshows, weddings, and funerals becomes a little weird. And we're sure Armstrong is perfectly fine with that. Something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you have the time of your life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen. Born down in a dead man's town, the first kicker took us when I hit the This essential 4th of July power ballad likely conjures up images of fireworks, American flags, and freedom. It's truly an iconic song of patriotism. until you realize that Bruce Springsteen basically spends the entire song criticizing America with respect to how working-class veterans of the Vietnam War were treated. Starting out, the song recounts the story of a man born dirt poor and constantly in trouble. He then goes off to war, and things just get worse from there. while the ever-popular chorus is repeated again and again. It's hard to believe that this song is played right next to the likes of God Bless the USA, when its message could not be any more different.
What song do you think has been misinterpreted? Let us know in the comments. B -b 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 Benny and Jess. Oh, and the wind and the waterfall. Oh, baby, she's a revocade. She's got electric boots. Boots. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.